Okay, how's everybody doing? So part two then of the derail device. Um, I'll just preface with a couple of things uh, before uh, we move into this probably final part two just to close out this derail. I mean there's not, uh, I don't want to labor it too long um, because there's so many other parts of the layout that I want to get to that are on my schedule. Uh, I'm running according to schedule because you know you have to have one make a list. Uh, I think I mentioned that about making a list like, uh, you know, for those of you that are building a model railroad or uh, in this case, a shelf layout, it doesn't hurt to uh, take like, you know, like just to jot down a list of the things that you want to like goals, like short little goals that you want to finish. Like, okay, I want to lay the track for this spur or this area and I want to ballast this part and, you know, uh, finish the building you know, or the warehouse or something like that. Like just write them down. Like it seems mundane, but it really does help. I do it all the time. Like, especially when I'm closing uh, a project and then I, there's details that you take for granted that are in your mind. And if you actually think about them and write them down, then you can complete them and then, you know, cross them off. Okay. So before we get rolling on part two here, uh, somebody mentioned, or I've heard a few people mention, uh, uh, you know, like in all fairness, again, uh, you know, when are you going to get to the paint stage? Well, you know, there's nobody that's more anxious to get to the paint stage or, or the paint phase in this particular chapter uh, than me. Because as you all know, I love to paint. And uh, that's one of the, I think, one of the, mo the, the most important uh, visual factors uh, with uh, any diorama or scale model, or, or in this case, model railroad, or shelf layout is to learn uh, how to paint better or more effectively and that comes with time anyone can do it I have taught uh, uh, many many people people that wanted to learn uh, you know at the university level even uh, that wanted to learn how to you know uh, spray paint or 
weather or you know just uh, apply colors in a manner that looks uh, realistic you know that has a, a uh, look to it uh, where they can uh, sort of achieve and evolve it into their own signature and that's part of the um, goal of this channel is to impart to those that want to also learn not just to build to scratch build but to actually paint the model that they scratch build and or kit bash or a straight kit as well uh, to look uh, in such a manner that it fits in to the terrain and the layout and makes them feel good at the end of the day. Okay, so um, in part one, uh, we ended with uh, this particular part here with the lip, okay, on the channel, and we were building up the anvil out of uh, quarter round and dowel, right? So let me zoom in and uh, let's have a closer look. Okay, so you can see that uh, I'm making 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Well, actually, this one's already finished. Okay, I just tacked it back on place. I had it up on the layout uh, in the last little featurette I did. Um, so just tacked it back onto the rail with CA. But you can see where I've laid here the dowel on top of the channel. And in this case, I used the, the quarter round. And then I've laid these plates on, which is the lip, right? which is uh, just to show you here. So the lip like this section right here is going to be sanded down, like trimmed and sanded down to look like this part. And then this quarter round or rod will be like this anvil piece. Okay. And we'll just clean that up first and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now what we want to do is, is just lay the plate in. Uh, you can see all these plates, and I've done it, you know, many different ways here. You can see that I sort of pre-cut, you know, the one on an angle. All right. And once again, I just determined visually from the photograph. So, um, like the photograph, you know, doesn't tell me the size of it, but it does show it in relation to the edge of the, to the anvil, right? Doesn't it? So if it's about as wide as it, then that's okay and you can cut it down a ways. And then I just put longer rectangle ones I can trim later. Because this gets trimmed off too right here, see. I'm going to trim one off and I'll show you in a second. But here I just pre-cut one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it on the tie. But I'm not going to lay it over top of the tie plate or the spike. I want it to sit flush like this. Okay, see the gap? It's up against the tie plate there, not on top, inside the rail. You want it like this, okay? Just tack it on there with some medium CA. And then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna get this pair of tweezers. What should we do, a dowel? Yeah, I'll do a dowel one. Oh, I'll do this quarter round one right here. And just put it underneath like that and pry up. It just pops off easy. See? But there's enough strength on there you know, that you can model it without it coming off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to trim away that, that strip flush to the outside of the channel. Right? Now you can do that any way you want. You can do it with a a knife like this. Cut the ends off. Just use that channel to square your cut up. That's basically what you do. Just trim it away. Just like you're tracing it. Okay. Then you can clean that up a bit. You can leave a bit of a lip on there if you want as well. See, so there you have basically the anvil. Like it's already basically, like that's acceptable for some people as well, you know. But what you can do with this now is, is you can do this now or later, you can round this off just with a little nail file or a file like this and just knock off all the square corners 
and it'll take on an even nicer look, okay? So now we're going to put this back on the rail, okay? And a lot of times what I like to do is not use my good blade. That's what I like to do is use my my secondary cheaper dull blade for just scrape a bit of the glue off this track here, the dried CA. And I'm going to put another spot on here to clamp this piece back in place. Now while I'm doing this, you want to notice that you want to keep the center of the anvil between the two ties if you can. Okay. I don't know if I glued that piece. Oh yeah, it's glued on. Okay. So now you can see there's plates for all of them. Why are they all different? Well, because you can do it different ways. You can lay a strip in here and cut this away later if you're not confident in the in the width of the plate. Like in this photo here, uh, you can see the plate. It's about as wide like where it flares out to the edge of the channel here, right? So that's up to you because there's so many different versions of these derail devices. If you Google up images, uh, you'll see for yourself, right? This is the one I'm building from the actual prototype that I'm modeling. Okay, so you can see I have all the rest of these. Now you can pop all those off and glue them back on if you're building multiple ones, which I encourage you to do because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to do one and then you're going to do the second one. You're going to go, wow, I just, I'm getting better at this. And then you're going to go do the third one and this one, you know, and then before you know it, like the last two that you have are the ones you keep and you give the other ones to your friends. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> or you just put them in a pile, like, you know, like beside a, you know, like a little mini vignette postage stamp scene, just paint them yellow and throw them a bit of rust wash on them in a little pile or something you know it's all usable right okay so we got all the plates in place here tacked in so let's um let's have a look uh, let's turn it around and we have this one here with the dowel okay like uh let's just try that one more time let's pop this one off see it comes off easy and uh let's just clip clean this one up a bit with some nippers snip snip and then uh, take this that dowel there to just use the channel as the rule for cleaning them up upside down right that's all you do there you go it's a nice I mean that's almost all almost ready to go see you just round off the excess with a with a nail file like that just clean it up nice have have fun with it and then I'm gonna tack this back on again right okay might want to scrape the glue off the inside of it if it's some residual cement there but I won't worry about this one okay so now we're going to make the little hinge and the swing arm okay and what you're going to need for this is these three products right here you need number 292 angle you need number 218 20 thou rod and number 154 60 by 80 thou strip which in quarter scale by the way is like 148 scale is th uh, 3 by 3 but that's insignificant to HO scale right now so uh, what we want to do is is build one of these 
Remember how I showed you with the hatch on the brewery extractor? It's the same, same idea. Okay. Here's the 20 thou rod, just a short piece with a bend in it, just so it doesn't fall out. Two pieces of angle with a hole drilled in. And then there's our 60 by 80 thou strip. Why they call it one quarter scale three by three is beyond me when it's not even the same dimensions on both sides. But anyway, so what I'm going to do to make these is, is I'm going to take the angle, like a piece of angle like this, okay, and I'm going to just mark it. I'm going to use a little piece of maple strip like this, and I'm just going to, uh, just to hold it, and then I'm going to make uh, marks every five millimeters. Okay. I'm going to cut five millimeter pieces. But before I do that, I'm going to take a 0 0.5 millimeter drill bit. This is the equivalent to 20 thou rod. Okay. Now a 20 thou rod is, is varies. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast with this stuff. It, it'll go from probably 22 thou to 18 thou along its full length sometimes but that's okay it's just sometimes it'll be loose and a little bit thicker but um, it goes through so uh, basically as I drill uh, a hole between that five millimeter mark by hand okay so that I end up with this a piece like that just random holes like you can like you don't have to do them at five mil you can just space them out as far as you want and like I say leave extra on each side of the hole right and then what you do is is you just come in here and you just make cuts on an angle like I'll just do this one in the middle like like that or square if you want this all comes the reason why I'm teaching to make lots of parts like do you want to know why I'm trying to teach that method because you gain confidence all this model building stuff, I'll tell you right now, is a basic skill. It seems intimidating at first, but look at the greatest sports teams in the world. When they lose their confidence, what happens? They look like losers, right? Like they have all the skill, it's there, but they've lost their confidence. So to get the confidence back, you practice. And then when the confidence comes back, it's, it's easy. It's the same thing with model making or model building. You just got to... I make mistakes all the time. Like here, look, I, I blew apart a whole bunch, like a couple of these anvils right here off camera. I was cutting a notch in them and I, right, cut them in half, right? A supposed pro making mistakes all the time. Listen, I'll tell you something too. You know the difference between a professional photographer and an amateur is? A professional only shows you their good pictures. That's it. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, we want to cut a whole bunch of these. And then when this angle is cut, we just flip it over like this. Okay. And then you can see your, your line there. And you just put your knife edge in there and you just cut like that. Put your knife in, in there. Cut like that. And there's your piece. See? There it is. And then I like to thread the piece onto the, you know, the strip, which uh, also we need to mark out. About every, I would say, 10, 10 millimeter mark, roughly make it longer and then drill a hole at the end like this okay one there one there just inside the mark of your line on either side whatever you want right just make an arm longer than you need okay and then you can just take it like this and just cut beside the next hole and you have your arm and then we take our 20 thou We make a bend, right, and then we thread on 
two of the hinges like that. Okay. Just to sound what see it's loose, see? And then there's the arm there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is is we're gonna take this this arm and hinge assembly and what we want to do is, is we want to lay it on top of the anvil. But before you do that, I want you to cut a small, or uh, you need to cut a little bit of a gap right in here, just through the dowel. The dowel version is easier. Okay, now you can do that by popping it off the rail and then gluing it back on, but do, use a very sharp knife. Okay, and then here's a little tip for you when you want to cut into stock, like solid stock. But just say this is the dowel, and you want to cut a notch into it, right? Uh, you can press down and take a risk and risk going all the way through, or you just put a uh, just push down, put a bit of a cut, and then just go in on an angle and just sort of chisel it out, okay? Like you'll go like this, press down. And then you go in on an angle and you just take a wedge out. And then you just take little cuts like that. And then you just square up the end until you get. The little notch that you want. OK, so now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to lay this bar in like this. OK. So that it sits on there like that. Now remember what I said about making several of these? This is why you do it. Because this is very small stuff and it's hit, hit or miss sometimes. I've already have two casualties, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to, like uh, the one I made before, I put that right about in the middle, but I'm going to run the edge of these hinges right to the edge of the plate there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, is I just want to hold down with the tip of my knife and just put a little spot of glue right there, just in one spot, okay? Like that. Don't worry about this bar here. Just make sure it's lined up with that notch. And don't worry if the notch is too big either. Because when you sand and put a blob of glue in there, it'll all fuse in together nice, okay? So we just want to just let that sit and let that tack up. Just do one side at a time. If you're confident, you can do both. All right, but there's no rush at this point, right? See, that's already starting to look pretty good. Eh? Okay. Okay, so here's one more tip. If when you're laying up your derail device parts on the rail like you tack it to the rail here and then you decide oh geez the ties in the way you know like when you want to center this you know well just create some space so this bar can hinge back unimpeded you know when you go to operate it on the jig well just turn it over all right and just remove these little spacers I just cut them out of there like all you need to do is push down like that carefully and then move that out of there and then you can slide that tie over so see here I can move that tie see because this track essentially is a jig right see the tie plate moving underneath I can line it up see and just to create a bit of space for the bar to fit in between when you roll it back to test it okay so I just want to point out here that you know when you're really sort of zoned in in particular off camera <laughs> or off of YouTube uh, don't be afraid to cut a little bit of an angle into this notch here like take your time with this notch part you know where this arm rotates into to sit in there like that like the more time like that's where you should spend most of your time I think um, if you want a nice clean solid um, 
anvil to hinge bar fit and strength. Uh, almost cut into the channel. Okay. And then when you glue it, you know, you'll get a really nice uh, bond, nice weld, so to speak. Okay. Okay, so now that we got it to our liking in terms of uh, the shape that you want, you know, like on the anvil head and so on, and this bar, we're just going to clean this up and I'll show you how to finish the hinge. Okay, so we just want to get underneath there and just work that gently. Okay. pin up out of the way. Take our little trusty chisel head blade and just gently work it off the tie. It should just pop right off every time. Okay so now what I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to cut the end of this little rod off flush so that we get form a good rivet head with the lighter, just a big lighter. That's all you need to do is go like this. Just, just touch it on there to create a rivet head. Okay. All right. And then we just pull this snug like that. Take just a light spot of cement. That's all you need is on this side. That's it. You don't need anything on the other side. And then you can nibble this off. If you're doing this in O scale, you might want to put a nut, you know, just you can make a nut out of a piece of uh, like this. Just cut it like an octagon and drill a hole and slide it over if you want. Anyway, so that finishes that. Now the bar. How do we clean up the bar? Well, I'll show you what I do. So now that this is set overnight, hopefully, I mean it hasn't in this case, but that's what I like to do, is I just go in here like this. Once again, very sharp nippers that are never used for metal. Never, ever have I used these. In, uh, I've had these for 30 years. Sorry, I get off camera there. Um, so I've used these for 30 years and they're still laser, razor sharp. Carbide, carbide stainless steel. Okay, so now that I cut that off there, then you can take that and just nibble the corner off the top. Give it a little bit of a sand to taste. <laughs> it's just good to go. Like I say, spend as much time as you want on shaping up the uh, the lip and the anvil until you're happy with it. And there you go. Okay, so that completes the derail device uh, mini tutorial, um, which was really uh, two parts, I guess, with a small little uh, sort of demo feature at uh, addendum in the middle there. Um, as far as mounting these, uh, it's up to each person. Like these are wooden ties, so it was fairly easy with cork uh, to set that in place. Uh, but you'll have to cut into your ties to set this plate down in uh, because it'll work fine when it's in the locked position. Even if it's on top of the ties or set in, it should be fine. Mind you, this is code 40 rail. This is built for code 70. This is code 55, so uh, it'll work here as well. Really good, actually. On there, too. Um, so they're pretty universal. Uh, you just have to tweak it uh, to your liking. Just take your locomotive with you know the lowest snow plow and make sure that when it's in the open position and you've carved away so this sits down in, 
in between the ties and then maybe cut into the ties just so that when it's down that your snow plow clears it okay all right uh, I'm not going to paint it just yet because I'm doing a big mass build. I'm in a build phase, so uh, I don't want to break up my airbrush right now, but I will be. And when I do, there will be a long series of paint um, tutorials and such. So that's just the way I do it. Like I don't like to change gears back and forth. You know, bang, 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 bang. I like to just do a, a good, long, steady run of a build when I get into the zone. And then when I feel I've run that course in that chapter, uh, then I'll switch to paint. And I'll uh, give you an explanation why and uh, uh, point out my reasoning for that. But I think some of you already know already. So, okay. So thanks a lot. Once again, I just want to say before the year is out, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you all for supporting the channel, especially those that have subscribed and watch a commercial. Whether you actually watch the commercial or not, I don't know. But when you do, uh, you know, um, I get, you know, the channel benefits from it, right? And to all the uh, uh, subscribers lately, uh, I want to give a special thanks too as well for uh, pressing that subscribe button because it really uh, helps uh, to compensate like my time because I do put a lot of time, like a lot, like believe me, I really do. I don't talk about it that much and I like to do it for the community because I care about the hobby and the people that are involved with it. And I just want to share and encourage everybody to, to press in and to develop you know, the skills like if you have the desire to build a model railroad you've already have the skills inside of you you just haven't discovered them yet and you haven't built up the full confidence that you will and can and those skills will become more and more evident uh, the more you put it to practice and you can achieve remarkable results uh, for your own personal model railroad and get tremendous rewards and fulfillment from it okay so thanks once again Hang tight. Uh, I might sneak in the episode, maybe one, maybe two, uh, but uh, I'm going to be with family uh, over the short holiday time, and I hope that you have a great holiday with your family as well, okay? Cheers, and have a great holiday season. <laughs>